Hi everybody, this is Professor Brennan. I'm going to talk to you about interpersonal communication. This will basically be your overview of looking at the foundations for interpersonal communication and how we will be talking about it through this semester. So I'm going to get right into the PowerPoint. Give me a chance to pull that up. Here we go. Okay, so what I want is that. There I am. Sorry, it just took me a second to do that. I'm going to pull myself down here. Okay, so here we are. And we're going to start from this. We're going to look at the basics, what I call kind of foundations to interpersonal communication. And we're going to start with remembering what we had talked about between that linear view of communication. Communication is a one time event. Imagine just for a second, and I know I said this in my other lecture, but just imagine if that is the way we communicated. Can you imagine how strange the world would be? I mean, we used to think of communication that way, but imagine what it would be like if I said something, you listen, and that was the end of the communication event. It would be, it would be kind of strange. So that linear view is it's a one time event, it's sender to receiver. And basically, this is actually that the, a model for communication is sender to receiver, the channels through that which the message goes, the receiver gets a message, and noise. Basically, we learn this in public speaking more when we talk more about all the possibilities. And you might want to think of this too all the possibilities of how, when we're trying to communicate, even think about it virtually, right? If Zoom is working or not working, is Screencast-O-Matic working? Can you hear me? When you're on the phone, if they're static, there's all these ways that noise, and we say noise as in anything that interferes with communication, and I'm talking about just external noise right now, uh, it's amazing that we're able to even get the message in the first place, right? We're just talking about those external things. What about the fact that maybe someone is learning a new language and they go to the country where that language is being spoken they're trying to communicate right in that and people don't understand so there's there's so many different ways that noise can be used but mostly it's about something external and it could also be something internal like your own thoughts like for example you're learning a new language let's say you're learning um spanish and you go to mexico for the first time and you don't know how to like find I don't know a restaurant or something and you're like donde donde I'm just gonna make it up not you don't say donde esta you say donde esta something like that right you're feeling very um, unsure or not confident of your ability to speak that language even though maybe you had I don't know three years of Spanish in high school or in college um, so that's another way that your message can get interfered with. It can be your feelings inside. It could be, um, you could just be talking, let's say you're just talking to someone and you're really hungry, right? So it's hard to focus in and hear what they're saying or listen to them because you're really hungry and you're just thinking about, I got to get out of here. I got to get somebody to eat, right? I'm really tired. I got to get some eat. So that's what that means by noise. I don't believe that we covered that. So you have an idea of what I mean by noise. Well, let's look at what we know communication to be, right? That transactional process in which people simultaneously, same time, create, interpret, and negotiate shared meaning through their interaction, right? It puts it all back. We're doing this whole thing. We're doing this thing and we're doing this thing. It's going around and around and around and around, right? It's all happening at the same time. Woo! It's messy, 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 messy. It's fun, fun, fun because you just don't know. Talk about living in the moment, right? That's what communication is. It's all about living in the moment. So let's look at this. It's making me, oh, here we go. Now we look at these as a transactional process. Then we look that the messages now are sent and received, right? At the same time, if we're thinking about that, keep that in mind, that visual I just gave you of that model, right? So now if we put it in a transactional mode, Messages are sent and received at the same time. Both sender and receiver are both senders and receivers, 
okay? And then what's even more important is this context. The context for which you're having that conversation is relevant, right? The context often has a lot to do with why you're talking about a per particular topic or even why you're talking to each other. And then the physical location, your personal experience, your cultural background, your gender, your sexual identity, all these factors become relevant in that transactional communication process. You bring all that stuff with you every time you talk to someone. You really think about that. One thing you're going to learn in this class is you bring all your stuff. Your stuff is your cultural identity. How well you do or do not, um, not believe is in the right word, but how much do you identify with it, right? So I'm white and I'm German and Irish, but I'm mostly Irish. I grew up in a family where the Irish identity was very strong. Although on my mom's side, very strong German identity, but her personality wasn't as strong as my father's. So my Irish identity, and my last name is Brennan, which is an Irish name, is very strong. So I identify with that. I bring that and all the ideas of what it means to be Irish in all of my conversations with people. If I hear someone's name, it's like an O'Reilly or a O'Neill or something that sounds like an Irish name, I automatically say, are you Irish? I'm always looking, seeking that kind of common ground with other Irish people as if whatever that means, right? But that, I bring that with me. I bring that with me in my identity. Irish people are, they're usually, uh, they've been known as really good fighters. They can have short tempers, which I, I do at times, but I get over it fast. They're also family oriented. They are, um, they like to drink. I used to drink a lot. Don't drink anymore. Uh, there's a lot of things about what is Irish. Okay. So that's what I mean. All of that stuff happens in this process of communication. We talked about noise, the different kinds of way noise can interfere with your communication, the noise that can interfere. And finally, what is the medium for which you're having that communication? So the medium for us is basically this virtual, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic, that's my channel for communicating to you over the um, internet, right? I'm connected up to the internet and I'm using this. This is my channel, Screencast-O-Matic. All right. So here we have it put in the context. So you remember that other linear view we had? This is that transactional view. This is These are basic foundations of how we understand communication. And notice there's just two people. And when, when we're studying looking at interpersonal communication, you're going to be looking at two people talking because interpersonal means is dyadic. Di a dyad is two people. Okay. So communication is a unique process. What does that mean? It's a unique human process is that there's all this stuff going on and we bring all our past experiences and our present experiences and then our expectations. All of this stuff happens in human communication. Now, I'm not going to say, because I'm not a dog, I don't know how dogs have a, have a way to communicate, but our guess as humans is they don't bring all that stuff. They seem to live in the moment, but again, I'm kind of like sciencey that way that I'm not sure how it happens and I'm not a dog, so I don't know, but I will say that they, it seems to me that they live in the moment and they don't have as much human baggage or any stuff, any, as many filters as we have. Okay. So we're going to look at. The way we want to think of is why do we need to communicate? And so I, I do want you to think of interpersonal communication because remember, communication is the driver of all relationships, right? And I haven't said this, you cannot not communicate. Okay, I'm going to say it again. You cannot not communicate. It's impossible. We are always communicating. So why do we need to communicate? Like, what is it about us as humans that we need to communicate? 
So it's because we have physical needs, we have identity needs, we have social needs, and we have practical needs or practical goals. And we're going to cover each one of these. So let's start with the physical needs. So your physical needs, I don't know if you know this or not, if you've ever heard any of these um, particular research studies, but there have been studies um, of children who have been orphaned by war and there was a particular study done it was in like eastern europe at the time and i don't remember the exact country it was but the babies had been orphaned and they were there were babies and they were put in an orphanage and a study ended up being done or they they did some they must have had a psychologist involved and the babies were just, their, their immediate needs were taken care of, meaning they were just fed and clothed, but they were never held. And there is this concept in psychology and probably sociology as well as this idea of a failure to thrive, that a child can die from a failure to thrive. And the reason why it has a failure to thrive is because it needs to be held. So, we physically, remember communication is both verbal and nonverbal. If we are not held as children and even talked to, okay, held and talked to, which is both nonverbal and verbal communication, we will die. And then I'm going to back up and say, we might not always die, but we will be developmentally disabled. And that's what happened. That's what they noticed is that these babies, because there were so many of them too, but they didn't know this then. They were just, their immediate needs were taken care of. And then they realized that these babies were had ended up be, having developmental problems because no one held them or talked to them or spent any time with them. So we physically need each other, right? We physically need each other. Our physical health is dependent upon it. So our ability to communicate both verbally and non-verbally, the people that are healthier, I just talked about that, the failure to thrive as infants. The people that are healthier are actually the ones that aren't socially isolated, the ones that do have family. So it actually, um, they've studies have shown that your risk for heart disease i like to think of it sometimes as heartbreak is decreased your risk for the common cold obviously your risk for um i want to say i want to go back sorry about that uh premature death but i want to say your risk for depression right depression in in some cases is a physical disorder so sometimes it needs to be medicated that's the truth but in terms of feeling isolated or lonely, the answer is companionship. We need each other. The idea that we're just going to walk through this world solo, and I used to think that I'm an only child. I used to think, oh, I could just do it by myself. That is a bunch of baloney. It's not true. We really do need each other. We are, um, we're pack animals. We're, we're herd animals. Um, but or pack animals, however you want to say it, but we belong. Community is important to us. So I'm going to stop there because I don't want to overdo on this. And then I'm going to continue on in the, in the next video about uh, identity needs. Okay, we'll be right back.